Welcome to Remix, Themes and Variations in African American Art. When you walk into this amazing exhibition, what you're gonna find are contemporary artists looking at America through the lens of contemporary art. And they tell stories. They tell stories adding details, subtracting details. They remix what they know. So when you see a story like Fahamu Peku redoing Norman Rockwell's amazing triple self-portrait, what he's saying is that all stories belong to us. I'm in this same predicament too of trying to decide who's the real artist, my image, my reflection, or you looking at me. This is an exhibition sure to stimulate your mind to reinvestigate those same stories for yourself, and importantly, to appreciate the power and the vibrancy of African American art in American culture. Some institutions like uh, the Studio Museum in Harlem and you know other places uh, try to overcome is you know in dictating the the narrative around uh, black art as opposed to having someone else dictate it. Uh, the Rockwell piece is a part of a, a larger body of work called Art History Next, where I re repurposed famous self-portraits throughout art history, placing myself into the the narrative. Um, but in the broader sense, you know, even though I'm the, the model, even though it's my body, it's not self-referential. You know, it's really more me performing um, and stepping outside of myself, but in stepping into some of the stereotypes and, and misreadings um, around black masculinity as a way of unpacking them. Oftentimes we have preconceived ideas based on, you know, media and other sources, you know, about who people are and what they're about, and, and we can't see past that. I guess that's what one could call artistic license, you know. Take, for instance, this uh, general that's uh, standing behind me here. Uh, it relates to um, the story of the Three Little Pigs, which was my absolute favorite as a youngster, but I'm giving my own version of that story that uh, sometimes the wolf is the victor and sometimes the pig is the victor. I enjoy changing those roles and um, letting my imagination just run, just run wild with, with each composition. I studied the um, series of portraits Dago Velasquez did of the gestures and dwarfs of the court of King Philip IV. These individuals um, were considered as pets to the royal court. But when Velasquez portrayed these individuals, he portrayed them with dignity and respect. So when Tarleton Blackwell paints a hog, a wolf, a rooster, he paints them with dignity and respect. What's amazing me about Tarleton's work is Tarleton likes Velasquez. He almost pants like him, but he's not <laughs> Velasquez. Velasquez didn't do hogs and, 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 and wolves and things like that. Artists influence other artists. It's just that you take it someplace else. Jasper John paints flags. He doesn't paint Confederate flags. Why would he? <laughs> he paints targets. But mine is about targeted man. We see it all the time. We see it with the police now doing that. It's always been a part of, a part of our culture. These are the signs and the symbols and the language that we have. It's not a reappropriation. Ultimately, this is our history too. We're right here, you know, it's a part of who we are. It's, it's a continuum in American art. The difference between remixing and appropriation is the sense of power because it is the dominant society that tends to take something without understanding its cultural practice, its history, what it means to people who have been doing it before, and then kind of claiming it as its own and then putting it back out there. When I was in high school, past American history, you had course offerings in Western civilization and non-Western civilization, <laughs> you know. Everything is centered around European culture. Um, it's, it's a point of privilege. 
I can exist in this country and be an African American artist. I can leave this country and be an American artist. Generally speaking, it's only here that we feel the obligation to marginalize, to use that, you know, that term to define who we are and who we are talking about. And we also use that to also keep people in a particular place. This piece was always really curious. It's called nurturing, as in Amadou Diallo and, you know, uh, who was shot, I think, 46 times by, you know, police officers who had to empty their guns, load again, empty their guns and load again, and so on and so forth. And you know, I think about that during that period, and then I look at what's happening, you know, around the country today between police officers and, and young African-American men. Uh, the same thing is still occurring. Nothing's changed, you know. And again, we would like to think that people feel differently about it and beyond us marching in the streets and so on and so forth, why doesn't America feel differently about it? A lot of what I've learned about history and art, I attribute that to my upbringing. I said, now I see why my grandparents behaved uh, the way that they did. I, you know, I talked with my mom about it in terms of um, the bridge between that era, her era, and the, my grandparents. Um, and now, and I'm trying to make sense of it. Whereas I think the, her generation, they didn't quite, they didn't question a lot of things. I, I think they had to do a lot of acting. Right now with this body of work, I'm interested in, in, in talking about social issues, how people relate to one another socially. I, I am making a statement. This is the caricature and this is the real. So what, what does that mean? You know, I don't necessarily try to give a final answer, but, but, uh, but I'm interested in raising a question. In the case of this idea of blackface and masking, it goes beyond this established definition that we have been given by dominant culture master narrative, the people that created this concept. And what it does is to a, create a space where you can kind of investigate on your own, right? What does this mean for you? How did this feel? How did these other elements kind of manifest and how do they connect with this whole idea of beauty. I know when people look at it, there is this element of like shock, right? And this political statement. But then there's also this other context that exists behind it. And these artists are able to explore that using this symbol or form that we're familiar with but it means something different to them or it's much deeper than what we're able to see. And so I think intention is incredibly important. I use blackface and it's, it's twofold for me. It is the, the racially charged history, but it's also my attraction to science fiction and the idea of a masked Avenger, you know, so why not take this image that's been used to beat us down and, and use it as, you know, the source of protection for my superhero. I was showing with Elizabeth Cabot some years ago, and we were talking, you know, because we did a, a couple of things on stage together, and it was really funny because she said, well, you know, it's better for your work to be social than political. Political means you're taking a particular point of view. Social means you're simply examining uh, uh, the situation culturally. It's far, far less important, I think, for you to know where I'm coming from and far more important to understand where you're coming from. Many people believe erroneously that you, you can separate art from society. Every artist paints out of his own experience, out of the result of his own encounter with the world. If African-American artists um, painted just to be accepted by the mainstream, we wouldn't create any art. There are themes that emerge in this notion of identity formation that everybody can relate to. We all have those same challenges in trying to determine, you know, our unique and individual voices that are informed by our experiences. At the moment I begin to block off, you know, some aspect of myself for your comfortability. I'm shutting down the conversation. We can't go past that point. You know, and for that reason, I, 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 I don't shy away from difference. I don't shy away from what makes me different, you know, because my experience as a black male doesn't speak for all black men. I'm an American who happens to be of African descent. 
I, it wasn't a choice I had. I was born this way. Now, who I am, you know, I think that's when we, we certainly take our certain paths. You know, what do you want to do in life? What do you want to be? I make art about things that concern me. At the core of who I am, I'm an artist. I happen to be black. I happen to be female. I happen to be American. But I'm an artist who makes work about humanity. Art museums now are coming to the realization that the African-American experience is also the American experience. Finally, they are catching up to that. And they are saying now that, you know, the prices are going up, and it's, if you're going to get African-American art, you better get it, because once this trend starts, you know, it's going to go. How timely this kind of show is when there's this movement across America to include African-American art in mainstream museums. Mm -hmm.